friends, to this week's installment of the recorded service at First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow, Kentucky. Today is May the 1st, 2022, and this is our third Sunday in the season of Easter. Thanks for viewing. I've got the headset back on, as you can see. Um, we have a bit of a different service again this week. The sermon today is a sermon that I've gave previously. I delivered this sermon on this same Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter, last year at First Presbyterian Church of Madisonville. Uh, the message is just as applicable today as it was last year. I hope you'll enjoy the sermon. I also want to give you uh, a couple of announcements to, to bring to your attention. Of course, you're all welcome to come see us in person at 200 East Washington Street any Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Look forward to meeting you face to face if you can. Those of you that watch us by YouTube and those of you that watch us by Channel 6 on Glasgow EPB, thank you for that very much. We appreciate your viewing. Now, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget your moms on Mother's Day. We will have a bit of a special recognition during our in person service for our moms, our mothers in faith, especially. That's the women in our life that, that brought to us the gospel message. We'll recognize them on Sunday. And in two weeks, May 15th, we have our graduation Sunday. We will honor our graduates from high school and uh, levels above on May 15th. After worship on May 15th, we'll have a potluck after church to um, celebrate with and to congratulate our graduates. Also, it is going to be a bit of a contest on the potluck on May 15th. It's a casserole cook-off, and you'll hear more about that next Sunday. But do plan, if you can, to come in person. Uh, you're always welcome to do so. Come as you are. There's no dress code. God doesn't care so much about what you wear. Just come with the right heart and experience the Holy Spirit with us. And so without further ado, I'm going to... Uh, let you go to the next part of this service, and thank you so much for being a part of what we do here at First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow, Kentucky. Have a blessed day.
Well, we're going to today keep the Easter season going. Um, this is the third Sunday in the season of Easter. So two weeks ago, we talked about, of course, the resurrection. And then uh, last Sunday, you remember, we talked about our good friend, Doubting Thomas, Thomas who had his doubts. And we're going to stay today in John's Gospel. We're going to stay in John's Gospel. And so those of you watching by way of live stream, I'm going to give you a minute to get your Bible out at home if you would like to and turn it to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And while you find that, Remember last week we talked about, you know, doubting Thomas and how Jesus gives us a little bit of space to, to doubt or to question or to ponder, right? Jesus gives us some room to work through things like he did with Thomas. And I mentioned to you last week that a lot of times when I look at a scripture for a sermon on Sunday, I have questions I have arise in my mind and I ponder things and I wonder, you know, why does God do it this way and not that way? Or why did Jesus do this but not that? And today's gospel lesson is one of those that I had questions about. Why? How? And so I want to walk you through the questions I had, see what kind of answers you come up with. And so please join me now in John's gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. I'll read straight through it. This is the third time Jesus appears after the crucifixion. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got onto the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast a net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the full net of fish, for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. When they got out of the out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of them, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus also tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See the sermon title there, Recognizing Jesus. We're going to talk about this and the question I had that came up in my mind. See, Jesus had appeared twice already, right? Easter Sunday and the, the next week for Doubting Thomas. And both times Jesus appeared in that locked room in Jerusalem. And he had his, you know, scars from the nails in his side and it was Jesus. This one's different. This time he appears on the shore and there's seven disciples, not, not the full amount, but seven of them are fishing. Jesus appears on the shore, but this time it doesn't sound like Jesus and it doesn't look like Jesus because Jesus shouts to the boat, hey, how's the fishing today? And they didn't recognize the voice. 
These men were with Jesus for three years. They knew exactly what his voice sounded like. They knew exactly what it would sound like if they heard it. They heard it so often for so many years. This voice wasn't familiar. They didn't recognize it. And it didn't look like Jesus either because we read here that they didn't dare ask, who are you? They knew who it was. Didn't look like him. My hunch is Jesus appears to be older because he calls the disciples children as if he's older than them. Just my hunch. But regardless, this person on the shore does not sound like Jesus. He doesn't look like Jesus, but he most certainly was. He most certainly was. So the question I had was this, as I read this. Why did Jesus change his appearance? You know, why did Jesus change his voice? Why did he appear completely different to these seven disciples than he appeared every other time before then? I pondered that, and I ran it through my mind and questioned it. There's a reason. has to be a reason, right? There's a reason why. Jesus doesn't look like Jesus or sound like Jesus did. And I want to suggest to you today, I, as, I, as I thought about that this week and question it in my mind, that Jesus did this not just for the seven disciples, but for us today as we read the same story to remind us that so often when Jesus appears in our midst, it's not going to sound like Jesus sound 2,000 years ago or look like Jesus looked. 2,000 years ago, but most definitely it will be him. Let's look at some examples of how, right? So in the story, okay, Jesus is on the shore. The disciples hadn't caught a fish all night. Sounds like my luck. That's why I don't fish. They didn't catch a fish all night. Jesus gives them some good advice. He guides them once again in the correct path. He tells them exactly what they should do. He said, guys, throw the net. You're on the wrong side of the boat. Fish on this other side of the boat over here. That's where the fish are. He gave them good advice. He guided them to the right place. And when they caught the fish, that's when they knew it was Jesus. It was deja vu. They had seen that miracle before. That's when it clicked. The guy on the shore that doesn't look like Jesus or sound like him, that's who it is. But Jesus guided them the right path once again, right? And fast forward to today. There are so many people in our lives that guide us the right way too, right? We've all had mentors that have given us good advice to tell us we're fishing on the wrong side of the boat. We've had people help us, like Jesus helped them. We've had people do things for us to guide us that didn't have to, but they did anyway. There are mentors, our friends. We all have them, and they don't sound like Jesus, and they don't look like Jesus. But boy, the Spirit of Jesus is moving through them because we felt it, right? When I was a youth at Smith Grove Presbyterian Church years ago, we had a lady at the, in that church that was the best person to go to for good advice. I mean, she would have put Ann Landers out of business if she had her own article. She was great at giving advice, always had the right thing to do, the right thing to say. Her name was Phyllis. And when I, when I was a youth working at the Smith Grove uh, Public Library, I had an issue and I would always go to Phyllis because she'd know what to tell me, what to do, how to handle it. And she was right every time and a true blessing, not just to me, but to many people. But she didn't sound like Jesus and she didn't look like Jesus. But boy, Jesus was present working through her, right? Jesus comes to us today in ways we don't recognize unless we're paying attention I'll throw this out at you too. This is something I discovered. Never underestimate, never underestimate the way that Jesus Christ can use youth and children to guide us. Don't overlook it. 
Many of you know I, I work with a 18-year-old man who's not here today, uh, Jackson. I worked with him for two and a half years. I can't tell you the times he said to me, have you ever thought about doing something this way? Or, or have you thought about doing this that way? Or have you, have you thought about this? And, and when he tells me those things, I follow them. And he's, he's right, usually. He doesn't look like Jesus and doesn't talk like Jesus, but he's, Christ moves through him. Never underestimate Jesus working through young folks. And even this morning, I'm guided by children, literally <laughs> guided by children up the aisle, right, that light the candles and then snuff them out. <laughs> and they don't look like Jesus did or sound like him, but most certainly the Spirit of Christ moves through them too, right? Never underestimate youth and how Christ can work through them for us. We all have people in our lives that have helped us the way Christ himself would have done it because Christ was there working through them. And they didn't look like Jesus or sound like him, but most assuredly, it was Jesus and his spirit, right? Also notice in what we read here, when the seven disciples got to the shore, Jesus had this charcoal fire going, nice and toasty, a little bonfire in the morning, and he talked to them, and they counted the fish, 153, and like fishermen would do, they would probably told some fishing tales, half true. <laughs> they fellowshiped. They had fun together on the beach, the eight of them together. They laughed, they told stories, they got reacquainted. Jesus loved fellowship. He, he loved to go in, in your home and visit with you, spend time with you. He and his mom went to a wedding in Cana, right? Had a good time there. Jesus loved the fellowship. And in our lives today, so often the people we have so much fun with and fellowship with, they don't look like Jesus, they don't sound like Jesus, but I'm telling you, the Spirit of Christ is there, right? Even this morning walking in, saying hello and good morning to each other. That's why fellowship is so important. And those of you viewing uh, at home, just know that you're welcome to fellowship with us whenever you'd like in person. Love to see you. Because it is important. Because we experience Jesus Christ in the laughter and the joys and the handshakes or the fist bumps these days, right? And the people we fellowship with, the ones that make us laugh, our friends, they don't look like Jesus looked. But you know what? Jesus is there. We feel him. And notice also in this that Jesus fixed the guy's breakfast. They came off the boat and Jesus already had fish on the grill. He is cooking it up, right? Had a spatula turning fish over. He's fixing them breakfast. He's got bread ready for them. He's going to feed them. And when he broke the bread, oh, that was Jesus, all right. We read in verse 12, Jesus said to the disciples, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask, who are you? He didn't look like Jesus. They knew it was the Lord, though, right? The way he broke the bread, fed them. People that feed us meals a day may not look like Jesus either, but boy, Christ is present. I'll tell you a quick story that happened to me uh, a week ago Saturday, eight days ago Saturday. You know, in Bowling Green, there's two Chick-fil-A's, right? And, and, and the newest Chick-fil-A, it has got the strangest, weirdest way to get to it. I mean, you've got to line up for the drive through in a way that doesn't make sense to get to the drive through you know, It's sort of weird how it's configured. Very confusing. And so Lisa, Meredith, and I were in the long line to get Chick-fil-A. And there's a guy trying to figure out, you know, where's the line start? He's, trying to, he's driving back and forth, didn't know where to get in line. I can see why. If you ever go to the Chick-fil-A in Bowling Green, right off the interstate exit, you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. And so he was confused where to go. And so I, I let him in front of me. 
you know, he was driving a pickup truck and he had a UK sticker on it. And I thought, this guy can't be all that bad, you know, <laughs> driving a truck, UK sticker. So I let him in front of me, you know, and didn't think anything else about it until we placed our order and the lady said, well, the guy in the blue pickup truck bought your meal for you today. I thought, well, that's nice. You know, he didn't look like Jesus at all. He didn't sound like Jesus at all, but boy, the Spirit of Christ was there, right? I think the lesson we get today, I think why Jesus came back this third time in a different appearance, probably an older appearance than what he appeared before, is to teach us today, as we go into the world around us in the year 2021, to pay attention. Jesus is in disguise. I think that's a song, actually, right? Jesus in disguise. He's in disguise all around us. If we just pay attention and look for him, we'll see him. He's in the person that's given us that good advice, guiding us in our life, our mentors. He's there. See, he's in the fellowship we have with our friends, laughing and cutting up and saying good morning and good afternoon. He's there. Doesn't look like him, but he's there. He's where we're eating our meals, prepared by somebody else, given to us in love. He's there. He's in disguise, right? Go forth today and pay attention, all of us, including me. See all the ways the Spirit of Christ is alive and well. We've got to pay attention to it. It doesn't look like them. And they won't be speaking Aramaic, <laughs> right? I'm sure uh, Sean and Kerry will tell you in the Yucatan, uh, no one spoke Aramaic there, but Jesus was there. Didn't sound like Jesus. It didn't look like Jesus, right? But he was there. He's all around us in spirit and through other people of faith as well. Enjoy his company. Enjoy their company. You'll see it all over the place once you start looking for it. Let us pray together. We thank you, Lord, today for, um, for your wisdom. For Jesus came back in a different appearance and in a different voice the third time he appeared to the disciples. For a reason. Help us today to uh, wrestle with why and understand why, but also to appreciate the fact that Jesus doesn't always look like Jesus as we picture Jesus to look or speak Aramaic as Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago. Help us to see Jesus in disguise all around us. The Spirit's everywhere guiding us laughing with us, feeding us, nourishing us, making every day a beautiful day in the Lord, in whose name we pray, amen.